The first thing to decide is what kind of tablet you're really interested in. There's really like three levels, I would say. Sort of the lowest level is the one that's like a glorified mouse. Uh, it's really just a sensor that senses where your pen is and it shows the cursor on the screen. These can be a little annoying because you're drawing on one thing and you're looking somewhere else. But you probably get used to it pretty quick. They tend to be in the range of maybe $40 up to maybe $500 for a really good high-end one. The second type are uh, what I have here today, which is a video monitor attached to one of these glorified mouses. And so it's got this touch sensitivity and you get to see what you're drawing on, which makes it a lot easier for doing some really nice drawings. These tend to be maybe in the $100 to $1,000 range. And at the high end of the spectrum are the built-in computers with all of this. So you don't need an external computer. You have a single large tablet, essentially, that you can draw right on. And it's got everything inside of it. And those go for two to maybe $4,000 for the top-end stuff. So you've got a whole gamut there. Then you have to decide what size you want. For the little mouse tablets, they tend to be smaller because you don't really need to move a lot. However, for the, the mid-range and the high-range stuff, you can get some really large tablets now, up to like 24 inches, which is great for drawing really detailed work. Although, keep in mind, you can always zoom in with this stuff, so you don't really need a giant tablet to make giant artwork. Against my better judgment, I went ahead and downloaded the uh, pen tablet software from the Chinese website, although I did not disable my virus protection, and it's still install installed just fine. Now when you start up the software, you're presented with a page like this, and you go ahead and click on the top button here, uh, and you can configure the buttons on the tablet. And to do so is a little tricky sometimes, you gotta check the checkbox and clear the uh, script that's already in there before you can type something in. But you do that, you can set up all of your buttons this way, quite conveniently. Uh, I chose to have uh, a zoom in, a zoom out, an undo button, and also a uh, clear button for removing all selections. I couldn't get the touch thing to work for GIMP, so I'm going to have to play with that a little bit more, but none of the options really did anything useful in GIMP for me. So next you go ahead and set up the pen itself, and for this I chose to make the top button of the two buttons a, right, a left mouse button click, because that's the most used uh, button. You can also see your pressure profile here and change that, although I'd recommend changing that in GIMP. The lower button uh, is set to E by default, which is sort of an erase function. I decided to go ahead and change that to a control S for file save, because I really like to save my files habitually all the time. So, hey, you can do it with a pen click now, which is really convenient. And then we go ahead and apply that. And then we go ahead to the setup screen now. And I have two, I have the main monitor, and when you hook up the tablet, it shows up as display two. So I decided to choose display two for that. So that's the only thing shown on the monitor. You can also calibrate the positions of the monitor and adjust the angles uh, and the setup. 
And great, now we're ready to do some GIMP. The first thing you really need to do is click on Edit, Input Devices, and make sure that all three, two or three of the uh, Huion related things are set to screen instead of disable. Uh, and this will allow them to be enabled so that they actually work with the GIMP software. And say, go ahead and save that. All right, I've got my button set up. So if I make a mistake here, I can just press Control Z and undo it. Uh, I can zoom out and zoom in with these buttons. Unfortunately, this trackbar, I haven't been able to figure out how to get that to function with GIMP yet, but I'm going to keep playing with it. Uh, and then uh, if you select something using, say, the magic wand, uh, that's hard to get rid of that selection. So you can go to Select None, which is Shift Control A, and then you can get back to drawing again. It was such a pain to do that, I just decided to make a Shift Control A button here uh, so that I can do whatever I want. And I've got the right mouse button here and a save button here, so I can just hit save. If my pen is close enough to the screen, it'll save that way. Keeps things easy.